Hi everyone, I'm Catherine, aka The High Hill Gamer, and welcome to The Late Night Nerd Show. Today I'm super excited to have this one-of-a-kind artist. So they actually take books and repurpose and recreate the covers. It's amazing. I fell in love with this at Baltimore Comic Con. Please welcome Elizabeth, or do you want to go by Liz? I can call oh, you Liz. Doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here. You look super cute. I love <laughs> love the vibe. Love the vibe. Um, so we met at Baltimore Comic Con in 2022. Um, do you tend to do conventions? No. So actually, that was my first. I had wanted to sort of get started on the convention circuit in 2020, and we all know what happens. <laughs> this is like my first year last year was when, when I got started. So. Nice, nice. So like I was saying, you take these books and you like recreate the cover into like a 3D wonderfulness that just <laughs> dives right in. Like when I first saw them, I thought they were just frames. And then yeah. you were like, no, they're books. And I'm like, shut up. So tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Um, so I am like actually a certified bookbinder. I uh, went through a two-year program to oh, learn how to yeah bind books and repair them. So like I know like the whole process. But for this, it's really about taking sort of like modern books and um, it's it's kind of like cosplay for the books. It's like a lot like what it is. It's a book makeover. And what I'll do is I'll take the book and sort of based on the characters and the design or the story, and really just try and um, re recover it in in something that like makes you feel like from that world so um actually i have a couple examples yeah yeah um so actually this is one of the first ones i did was uh black panther and there's actually three different um hard to see but there's three different kinds of black leather on this and they're all different textures oh. and then i did some foiling um and obviously based on the on the you know the costume from the movie um but this is one of the first ones i did um i have back here sandman which is obviously like very popular right now yeah and this is like a combination of leather and marbled paper based on one of the like wow. the more, more famous illustrations on the back you have matthew the raven um wow. that's all you know that's this part is leather and then the rest is this really nice handmade marbled paper and then i also have like so this is like a, a steampunk novel and you can see it's a it's a victorian steampunk so it's it's got that like brocaded you know really fancy cloth and then i ordered custom tools so that like the spine would have these cogs in them and add like little um it's hard to see but uh oh that's cool yeah a like the bookmark yeah yeah so, so how did you like how did this idea come about like how did you come up with this? Sure. Um, so I went to school and the original plan was to, uh, the, the program that I went to is, is a trade school for like old world like trades. Like they do violin making and like like carpentry for rest, uh, restoration of like old houses and like um, piano technology. Like we're talking like old school stuff. So mm. bookbinding was one of the programs and it's sort of, it can be a stepping stone to get into uh, art conservation which is like these are the people that work at museums and fix up the paintings and mm -hmm. you know protect the the paper and like all that stuff um so i went in with the thought that i would spend two years learning about books and then go into a book focused conservation like grad program um and i got halfway through and i <laughs> realized i didn't want to do that <laughs> um, <laughs> as cool as it is and it it's it's really interesting and fascinating it's um a lot of what the conservation uh, specialists do is they they don't they preserve it. The whole attitude of conservation is not to change the object in any way, um, but to preserve it. You know, moving forward for future generations. Mm -hmm. um, but like I'm like the type of person that I see something and I like I want to fix it. Like, <laughs> you know, like that like bothers me a little bit. So <laughs> didn't have the right attitude for that. Um, but we did learn, you know, how to take sort of books and um, and just sort of make them look sort of fancy again and, and do a, like a restoration process. And I was like, I want to do this for like my library. Like I want my Harry Potter books to look like they came from Harry Potter Hogwarts. You know what I mean? Like, and I want like, because I'm a huge fan of like, you know, graphic novels and, and, and fantasy novels and sci-fi. Like I want 
my books to look awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and so it sort of steamrolled from there. It was like, oh, okay, well, then I'm going to do this. <laughs> like, this is this is what we're going to do. And um, and people sort of really liked it, and they it, it sort of caught on. So this is where we are now. <laughs> yeah, like to me, it was such a, a an incredible idea, simply because. Um, so I, I definitely judge a book by its cover. I know yeah, you're not supposed to, but I do. Um, and then just seeing like the care that is, that goes into and the detail that goes into each of these books, because you're trying to represent or encompass the book itself yeah. on, on this cover. Um, do you have a favorite cover that you've done? Uh, I like the full metal one that I did was, was pretty spectacular, um, and I was really proud of how that came out. Um, and you know, some of them just worked out like the, the Black Panther one was pretty awesome. I did do, uh, from the Sandman universe, there was a, a death graphic novel, the special edition. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I installed, you know, her character is like this eighties, you know, sort of punk rock or goth chick. And so I, I did this, uh, half, half leather, half black cloth cover with spikes down the front Ooh. like actual like studs that <laughs> was a lot of fun um so yeah like I just it's nice because um when I have commissions that you know I, you want to work with the client and make sure they're, mm -hmm. they're getting what they want but like you know sort of when I'm on my own and I'm sort of just playing it's it's playing so it's yeah <laughs> where do you get the material for for all this uh, a lot of different places. So um, there are a, a several sort of vendors that specifically cater towards bookbinders. Oh, yeah, it's a it's a it's a small but thriving community. You would be <laughs> sort of amazed. There's a guild. I'm part of a guild. Um, oh wow! <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm like legit. I thought you was gonna be like Michaels or Joanne's. <laughs> yeah, and I, I definitely like hit those guys up too. Um, but you'd be surprised. There are definitely because you know when you're dealing with especially modern book binding a lot of it is um you're trying to do like acid free products you, you're trying to use products that are not going to sort of degrade uh, you know moving forward mm -hmm. um and so like some of that is bad. you can't use cardboard on the on the hardcover it's not gonna work you know what i mean yeah. um and book cloth like book cloth is like a special sort of made product that has a, a paper backing so that that the, the glue doesn't seep through the cloth and like sort of appear oh. yeah on the surface of the book so there's a, there's a couple of vendors um and there's also you know for leather because i i do deal in uh genuine leather it's usually it's goat sometimes it's uh sheep or calf um there's also vegan leather you know because i know some people mm -hmm. won't agree with that but um most of the leather comes from overseas like uh there's still like a bunch of uh um you know leather distributors that that rocket old school and they just yeah i mean these are crafts that have been around for hundreds of years so mm. like, these people know what they're doing <laughs> you took it and, and gave it like a modern twist to it and yeah. i like that is it easy to maintain as far as like cleaning it and stuff like that do you like send instructions like this is the best way to keep it dust free and stuff like that but you know actually that never occurred to me i will say though for anybody listening please do not oil your leather like that's some like a thing that I guess some people think they should do, and that's that's not that's necessary. Not good. It's, not, it's not good. It doesn't <laughs> doesn't work. Um, so don't oil your leather. Um, but most of them, the leathers that that I use come, and they they already have sort of um like almost like a sealant to them, so that they're like the skin is as protected as it can be. Okay. Um, so yes, yeah, so you get that sort of great smell. You know, the book leather smell without um without it breaking down on you. Is there any book that you won't do? Like, I know you've done manga and graphic novels. Is there any type of book that you're just like, no, I kind of don't want to mess with that? Um, You know, like I have gotten some repairs in. I, I won't take like moldy books um, just because I, I like there is a way to fix a moldy book, but I just don't have the, the tools or the equipment for it. So in terms of like repair, I just can't do that. Um. But like no, like I'm sort of game for anything, you know what I mean? I I'm excited to like work with people. So that's yeah. cool. And you said you said tools. What I know you said you have a couple of, of tools there um near you. What kind of yeah. tools do you use for stuff like that? I'm, so, I'm interested. 
<laughs> so bookbinders are really like a, a wacky sort of people. Like they will sort of steal from every other uh, <laughs> discipline there is. So like our our hammer, and this is to like help shape the spine of the book. Oh. And you can see it's it's like not flat. It's actually curved and like. Yeah, you know, I noticed that. Yeah. Yeah, this traditionally is a cobbler's hammer for making shoes. Um, oh. Yeah. And so like I bought this in an antique store because, you know, as long as for a lot of the tools, like some of them are hundreds of years old and like, here's an example. Um, so this is the uh, tool that I was talking about. I got it custom made. It is a- Oh, for the spine. Yeah, it is a um, cog tool, you know, and this one is the same kind of tool, but it is like, sorry, I'm trying to find the camera here. There we go. <laughs> uh, this is like probably a century old, probably older. You can see like the wood and how, you know, old. And, <sighs> <laughs> um, and as long as the impression in the, in the top of the tool is still good and deep enough for the leather, like, you know, these things don't get thrown out. They're they're both a part of history and still sort of, you know, making their mark. So, That's uh, pun intended. <laughs> pun intended, yeah. So uh, they're they're really cool. That's great. So, like, do you just like press down, or is it like like how does how does the impression actually like end up on the on the on leather? The yeah. Uh, so it, you, there's a couple of different ways and techniques, but uh, typically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna like dampen the leather a little bit. I'm going to let that seep and sort of sit in there um, while I heat up the tool. And then um, oh, I'm going to oh. put the hot tool into the leather. And there's like, there's like this balancing act of like, it, it can't be too wet or else it'll literally burn through the, the skin. Um, and it can't be too hot for the same reason. So you have to find like sort of the, the right ratio. And then, um, and then like once the impression is made, so that combination of heat, and pressure and uh, dampness will help the impression stay in the leather. Like it'll help it make crisp. And then usually you go back with like foil or gold leaf or, you know, whatever to add, you know, sometimes you'll go back and you'll add that color pop to it. So oh, that sounds like now I'm picturing you like Renaissance <laughs> and like almost <laughs> like a, um, a blacksmith um, area type of thing. Yeah. Just, you know, impre I'm like, yeah. she looks so dope to me right now. Just like, <laughs> like, you know, it takes like a lot of muscles, actually. Like, you'll be surprised. Like, you know, I'll come out and my forearms will hurt because, you know, you're going through and you do it several times, you know, so it, uh, definitely a little bit of a workout. <laughs> That seems like that's how that, that's how I'm picturing you now, like just Renaissance, just like I'm like she is so it does, badass it right now. Too. You can hear it like when you're like quenching the tool. It like <laughs> that's so cool. Now, have you always been a fan of books, or was it something that you developed? Like for me, I was not a fan of books as a little kid because I was a slow reader, still am. But I learned that you know now that I'm not rushed by school, like I learned to appreciate books on. older. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. So were you always a fan of, of books? Yeah, I mean, I've been a book lover for like, you know, the whole my whole life. But um, when I was in college, I took like my first book binding class and they took us to this rare book dealer, right? It was just a really nice guy. He had some cool stuff. He had like first edition Isaac Asimov, like classic sci-fi. Yeah, like he had some really, and he had, he had brought it out for us, you know. So we put on our little white gloves and he was really cool he was like oh you know feel free to pick things up just be gentle and I'm like mm -hmm. all right so I pick up this little box and I'm like oh what's this and I open it. it's like the size of like a walnut right and I take out this thing and I'm like oh this is cool what is it he's like that's a cuneiform tablet it's like the oldest piece of you know writing that exists and I'm like I'm gonna put that back <laughs> you know, like, oh my god that's so cool though <laughs> um but like it was sort of like this moment like oh like crap this is like awesome <laughs> <laughs> which is why like you know originally I thought I was going to go into art conservation just because like the history there and like mm -hmm. the idea that these things these objects move through time and then pick up their own stories you know like um whether that's writing in the margins or you know people scrolling their names in the front or like whatever it is um I just think that's really cool and uh and so like the something really romantic about that notion that that I love mm -hmm. so What's your all-time, do you have an all-time favorite book? Oh, God, no. There's too many to pick from. Like, I, <laughs> I 
there seriously. Like I, I think I come out with like favorite book lists, you know, every year and they always change. Um, I did, I, I am a fan of, of Wheel of Time. So I, I waded through all what, 14 volumes of it. Uh, it was a, it was a great book series. I love um, Terry Pratchett. I mean, you can't, like, you can't go wrong with Terry Pratchett. It's hilarious. Um, I like, I, and I'll read anything. So like, uh, there's a great writer, Rebecca Weatherspoon. She writes like a uh, romance and it's like, she'll cover all bases from like, sort of like BDSM over to like, gay vampires to like <laughs> sort of whatever a good range of, of yeah, romance you like. that's good yeah stuff. steampunk like you know I, I like reading so the only thing i really don't like reading uh, funny enough is actually history <laughs> i don't like <laughs> drive <laughs> love the history behind books don't love right? history books <laughs> storytelling if it's a good story yeah. i'll read it but uh, yeah, what what about you? I mean, are, you said you were like a slower reader, but a slower reader, what, I mean, what's your favorite? So I actually, oh, my all time favorite book. <laughs> yeah, right? Like when it's thrown back to me, I'm like, that's not fair. Like, I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know if I have necessarily like an all time favorite book of mine, but um, reading Goodnight Goon to my youngest. Um, so Goodnight it's a play. Goon. Yeah, so it's a play on Goodnight Moon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's Halloween based. Nice. Um, and it's just, it's kind of like their first horror book, if if you will. Um, Cause there's a, yeah, cause there's like a, and to the little old vampires screaming boo, like, you know what I mean? Then they like, jump. Um, so I actually end up giving that book to anyone that has um, a kid uh, after I've read that. So yeah, good night goon. It's such a cute little play on good night moon. Um, but for me, I think, um, I don't necessarily have a favorite book, but I do love Stephen King. Um, oh, yeah. I'm a huge Stephen King fan. And then his son, Joe Hill, um, came out with Lock and Key, which I yeah. think he didn't you do I it? Did. You did yeah, I did a version of that. Yeah. yeah. So um, those kind of type of stories are, are like my favorite favorite um to read um i'll read anything um sci-fi is just a little difficult for me because like i said i'm a slow reader and some of the words i get lost with like you know these oh, unique so planet so names yeah they're very involved and you're like what like if you read dune there's a couple like really important words in that series that like are really close and you're like wait wait which one are we talking about right now nope, <laughs> nope. yeah, it's a great nope. series but you know, uh, you actually had um, the Full Metal Alchemist book. And I wanted to get it. And then, like, life just hits you with a ton of stuff. Um, yeah. I actually, my card, um, my debit card actually ended up getting um, suspended during that weekend because I bought, I, I had booked the hotel. My husband had bought groceries. And they're like, wait a second. How are you spending this amount of money in two different yeah. places? Yeah. yeah they were like we're shutting this down and then of course it's the weekend so they can shut it down but they can't reactivate it which is like my favorite thing of course yeah so but um you you said you take commissions so people can come up to you do do you get the book or do they send you the book and then you send it back uh either or like i i had a um a woman recently like over the summer sent me she had a signed copy of uh near the wind and obviously like you know that's something she wanted specifically uh, rebound for her. So that was a fun project. Um, but it, it depends. I mean, I can just as easily, you know, grab a copy if, if the person doesn't have one or if it's like a special, you know, addition, you know, like I'll, I'll take that too. That's totally fine. So that's cool. Yeah. That, I like that. Cause that way, you know, in case they can't find it, you can, you can definitely um, yeah. help out with that. That's, um, are you like, I don't want to give away your location, but like, are you in a, in a major city where you, you're able to find books easily? Or do you just go through like Amazon or, or like barnesandnobles.com? I think, well, I, you know, I try and avoid uh, like the major retailers um, for, you know, I try and support like independent bookstores. So I, like my first go-to is going to be like uh, bookshop.org, you know what I mean? And supporting sort of like my local uh, stores. But uh, outside of that, um, if I have to, I'll go, you know, I, I am outside of Philly. So there are some options for me. Um, but I also, and it, you know, I, I'll disclose this on, you know, like my site, if the book has been gently used before, like, you know, I'll let people know, but I, for me, I'm open to using, 
you know, gently use books and as long as the customer is okay with that. Um, oh, okay. Not only because I think, again, like the history of the book for me, like yeah. that's really cool, but um, usually like, you know, depending on the book, like actually Stephen King's a good example, like because he was writing sort of far enough back, like some of the editions of his book were were produced in a way that they are in better shape than, you know, some of the more recent versions, you know, like yeah. the blues that they use and they, uh, a lot of books aren't actually sewn anymore. Um and so if you go far enough back they're at least machine sewn which is like you know obviously like a machine is doing the sewing but like mm -hmm. actual thread involved not you know just glue <laughs> um so so yeah like i you know if a customer's okay with it i'll get a gently used book make sure that it's okay and then go from there that's pretty cool what's yeah. the toughest part of of like the book binding like what's the toughest thing to do when it comes to that um it, you know, it depends. If I'm doing like repairs, uh, tape removal is really difficult. Um, you know, because people will just put tape, you know, to fix a rip or whatever, and it's it's so bad. It's so bad for the book. Um, and like acetate tape is like um, it will old enough. It will literally like the adhesive will dry off in, in this weird powder and like and like you have to sort of melt it off. It's it's sort of gross and weird. Um, so tape removal is really hard. Um, but for like some of the modern stuff, um, a lot of it, because I work with graphic novels and they're so thin, uh, sort of juggling the, the proportions of like a hard cover on something so thin. That's why for me, it's easier at times to sort of combine a couple, you know, like okay. take one or two volumes, combine them just to make the book a little bit thicker and, and sort of makes more sense that way you know mm -hmm. oh, okay yeah i wasn't because like the way i imagine it it's almost kind of like the old school way you, you um used to cover a book i don't know how many old heads there are out there but back in the day <laughs> we used to have to cover um, um oh, the our, textbooks. yeah the textbooks for school yeah. but i i know it's a lot more detailed <laughs> than that um so how long i know each each book is different because of the size and what you're doing to it. But is there like an average time of how long something like that might take you? Uh, usually it takes me between like, uh, like around 20 hours, give or take. Uh, and that could be spread out. Uh, you know, it depends. It depends on uh, the glue time, drying the glue, you know, especially if you're dealing with leather that that usually takes overnight. Like it's, it's a, it's a, I'm going to do this today and I can't touch it again until tomorrow, you know, until okay. it's set properly. Um, so you, that sort of spreads things out over time. Um, and it, I guess it depends on how complicated the construction is. I'm like, for example, right now I'm attempting, we're going to, we're going to see if it works out. I'm starting to plan out for Deadpool and I kind of want to put this little pocket on the cover that like, <sighs> You can open and like put things, <laughs> put things in. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to work, but we're going to see. <laughs> we're going to see. We're going to test that. And now was, is that your idea or is that a commission piece? No, that's, that's my idea. This is like, I, I rewatched the, uh, the movies recently and like he was making jokes about the fanny pack and I like, I had this insane idea and I was like, I'm going to try and do this. We're going <laughs> to work out. A book with a fanny pack. I love it. <laughs> be funny so <laughs> now when if if a client has like an outrageous like request do you try to do it first or you already know what you're capable of and you're just like no <laughs> <laughs> it depends you know um i think a lot of people don't know enough about this so a lot of it is is me sort of trying to educate and help people get to where they want to go um but I, I had a client recently, I did a really cool, like oversized box for him for one of his, actually his collectible Stephen King, it was Salem's Lot. Um, oh. Yeah, yeah. And it was a, he wanted this imitation suede, which is beautiful, but uh, I had never worked with it before. And I knew it's like a fussy material. Um, and like, unforgivable if you get any glue on it, you know what I mean? Because it's like, it's mm. got that fuzziness, you know, that if, if there's glue, you're going to see it no matter, like, there's no hiding any yeah. mistake. So I said to him, I was like, usually it's not like the whole box that is covered in this. Usually it's like the bottom. And he's like, I know, but 
wouldn't look great. And I was like, <laughs> I mean, it, it would. <laughs> I was like, all right, we're going to, we're going to try it. And we did it and it worked out great and it came out wonderful, but it was oh. just a very slow process because I was, there was a, there's a lot of, you know, oh crap, oh crap, please don't smear. <laughs> like, please don't. Aw, oh, I can imagine working with something like that. Just, well, I'm a klutz. So yeah. to me, it's just like, I, I imagine like my handprints with mm -hmm. glue and then the, the fuzz just like, uh, what's the word, mat it together. Yeah. That would be my yeah. look. That's why I don't do those kinds of things. <laughs> you do get covered in glue and you find it in weird places. Like you don't realize you're touching your face or your hair, you know, and later you're like, what is, ew, okay. <laughs> Have you ever had something like that though? Like a glue, like a glitter, like glitterified <laughs> book? I, I, I avoid the glitter. <laughs> okay. Glitter is not my friend. <laughs> Cause I'm just like, I just uh, thought about that. Like, how do you do like a glitterified book? Like there's going to be glitter everywhere oh, unless yeah, you like no. seal it up, I guess. No, I... I have not had to, and I, I would probably see no to that. <laughs> um, but no, like I have like honestly gotten glue in my hair and like, it's, you know, it's, it's gross, especially when you get it all over your hands and you don't realize it. And then it sort of starts to flake off and it looks like dead skin. So you have like these strips, and you look like a zombie. People, people <laughs> in the store are like, what is wrong with this woman? That's awesome. Yeah, so. oh my gosh and you sell everything on etsy right yes yeah most of the things i do etsy um i post all my um sort of progress pics of whatever i'm working on on instagram and my facebook page um for the shadow bindery so uh people sort of like again because they're curious and they don't mm -hmm. Like even you said, you, you when you walked by it, you thought it was just like a framed work of art. Most people yeah. who worked walked by the booth thought it was like like journals, and I had to be like, "They're not dead journals. I promise you the books." <laughs> so uh, no, yeah, I was like so surprised. I was like, "They're they're the actual books," and you were like, "Yeah, look, you can open it up," and <laughs> yeah, I was just like, funny. "Yeah," and it was like so like really well done, really quality. Like you could tell that. Or I could tell that you, you know, took your time in, in doing all of that. Um, do you plan on any cons this year? Yeah. So right now I'm slated to do the Philadelphia Comic Con in early June. Um, I applied for the Pittsburgh uh, Anime Con, but they uh, they put me on the wait list. So we're sort of, we'll, we'll see what happens with that one. Um, so those are the two I have so far. Um, I, I'm thinking about going back to Baltimore. Uh, I sort of want to see how, like, you know, these these cons do. I'm still trying to figure out con culture. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, so we're gonna we're gonna see how it goes. Con culture is is a whole different beast, <laughs> all in its all. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I travel the East Coast, so I go from yeah. from New York to Florida and in between. Um, and it's it's. Yeah, I think you would do great in Florida, actually. If you ever decide what? that you want to travel, Florida would be good for you, <laughs> I think, me personally. Right. But, um, mind. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think, so I think your booth is really well done, too, because it's eye-catching. And, and that's what kind of, like, I looked and I was like, oh, those are pretty cool, you know, artworks. <laughs> and you're know, like, no, they're books. And um, so with it being your first con, were there things that you learned the like things that you learn that you're like, I'm going to do this again. I'm not going to do this again for those that are interested in like possibly doing a con for the first time themselves. Yeah. Well, uh, I did it by myself. So if I can bring somebody, I definitely want to bring somebody next time. Uh, uh, and there are a bunch of Facebook groups, you know, for people who are, are looking, uh, particularly for like artist alley or whatever cons that I found really helpful. And that like would have like tips, like bringing like uh, extra cell phone chargers, you know, and like charging packs and stuff like what I would never have thought of that. And thank God, because, you know, when you're doing credit card transactions, like eats up a lot of your battery. Um, but for me specifically, I actually found that like my comic book and book taste was a little too esoteric. Like I didn't, I, it didn't occur to me. Like I had lock and key. I had the walking dead. I had full metal. Like I had some, some of the bigger names, mm -hmm. but because people didn't know what they were, sort of offhand I think they like didn't really get it so um so f like I'm trying right now I'm building up a lot of just more uh well-known like I did a Batman recently and Wonder Woman um I have like Deadpool and then I had a bunch of people 
do like suggestions they were like you know if you had hellboy you know that would be great i was like i'll do hellboy oh Oh my gosh hellboy would be a good one for you to do so actually i'm working on that now and uh of course he's giving me hell but that's fine (laughs) (laughs) um but like so i picked up loki and catwoman and sort of like some more mainstream titles just so that like when people see them i'm hoping like it sort of translates a little faster um and then like like the manga and this is my own fault because i i again i did full metal i did uh i have akira on my desk i have a couple of them but like why why didn't i have naruto and why didn't i have you know what i mean and like these are titles that like i personally love i just for some reason it didn't didn't think so yeah i was like okay well i'm gonna do bleach and naruto then so i have some really cool stuff sort of in the pipeline that i'm excited about and then um, I was telling you before that I'm also uh, gonna do, I'm gonna bring at least one set of gamer manuals that I'm gonna redo. So I have I have seven C's. Oh, um, that's a good one. Yeah, and I have the compendium, the key master's guide, and I have the player's guide. So it'll be like a set. Nice. Yeah, and I have a couple others. I have Numenera out there, and I have uh, Malifo Two E. So. Like I have a couple of samples just to show people like this is an option mm-hmm. you know? um, because a couple of my gamer friends have been bugging me and they're like, you should do these. I'm like, oh, okay. If you guys think <laughs> I'll do them, that's fine. Yeah, now I'm going to go through my gamer manuals because yeah. I know I have a lot of like the um, Final Fantasy collector edition manuals. Nice. Now I'm going to go through them. Girl, be careful. <laughs> I'm going to ship you a whole container. <laughs> there you go. It's going to be like, awesome though you know final fantasy would be a blast to do (laughs) i think i think so yeah final fantasy would be a really good one to do um uh uh, kingdom hearts yes would be really dope too like it would almost be like the lego movie you would be able to throw like everything (laughs) would be a lot of fun (laughs) yeah oh my gosh that's that's so cool like so you say you come up with excuse me you come up with a lot of these ideas yourself is it through reading the books themselves or is it just you just kind of I know a lot of people don't do this but sometimes you spend time with an object and you're like feeling for the essence of that object (laughs) don't judge me I do that sometimes (laughs) so is it like is it do the ideas come from the reading of the book or is it that you see the original cover and you're like I can 100% judge this up how do these ideas like pop into your head um you know it, it depends on sort of like the style uh of story we're talking about so like so for seven seas it's probably going to be like this pirate steampunk you know and actually I have this re- I already bought this really cool leather that's like this cracked and weird looking like red like scaly like really excited about Ooh. it um but like, so for Deadpool, like my original idea was actually um, based on the movies, you know, those weird, like little cartoons at the ends that he draws. Mm-hmm. Like, I thought it'd be really funny to have them like across the cover, you know, like that, that would make me laugh. So I'm going to do that. But when I tried it, I did an experiment and it like failed, <laughs> like failed miserably. I was like, okay, we're going to, we're going to switch gears here. Um And that is like half of my process is like, I have an idea that seems really wonderful and then totally doesn't work. And I just have to like, (laughs) oh crap, what am I going to do? But like some of them, like, like Harry Potter, like that was much more straightforward because, you know, I really did want it to look like it came out of um, Hogwarts and there's like, you already know that aesthetic in your head. Like, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's going to be leather. It's going to have the corner, you know, the corner triangles, you know, it's going to have a really cool paper. Yeah. Like there are things that you already know going in about a book. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I trust my gut and I sort of see where it takes me um, with those things. With the with full metal, you know, I, um, that sort of just develops along the way. Like I knew that I wanted the uh, alchemy wheels you know, like the symbols on the cover. It was just sort of like a lot of um, experimenting to figure out how to do that in the best way. Mm-hmm. So, um, and then I was really, I was just really pleased with the results. So. Your earrings are cute, by the way. Did you make those yourself too? No, these these are Etsy. I just, 
you like my little tarot cards yeah like <laughs> yeah i meant to say it earlier and i was like those are flip because at first i thought they were like um regular deck cards and then i was like oh no they're tarot cards like, yeah, so regular tarot cards. So i have cool. little book ones too but i decided to wear the tarot cards today <laughs> i like it i like it i like it a lot um are you gonna are you gonna try to like expand from books and try to do something like maybe video game covers themselves or or is books your like no this is my niche my niche I, this is what i love I think I'm going to stick with books for now. I don't like, I'm still, you know, there's still so much for me to learn even about books and like really making sure that everything I produce is like top quality. And um, yeah, I'm still, still learning, you know what I mean? And I just want to make sure that like, I sort of master this before moving on. I love that. I love that you're still learning and you're, you know, cause that's one thing to, to, perfect yourself is you always learn you learn something new yeah. trial and error you know um I think that's so so cool um I'm I'm excited I I'm I've got my wheels turning like what books do I have that I could probably like try to work with you on commission yeah. like <laughs> hit you up on your Etsy like hey I have a hundred books <laughs> one at a time we'll see <laughs> no and it, like it, that's the one of the funnest parts for me is like I am as excited about this as like you guys are because like, you know, like this is fan culture and this is like one of the best parts of it is like geeking out over like things that we mutually find really awesome. You know what I mean? I, that's the best part for me. So. I think that tagline it's cosplay for books is like my <laughs> favorite thing. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, work that into the title somehow cosplay <laughs> for books. Like, there you go. <laughs> it, really, it really is. I mean, and the way you display it like i said it does end up looking like um art on a frame but then when you actually like hold it and like feel it it's again i say it's great quality great work and you definitely can tell that you know you spend time and effort into making sure that each book looks unique um in its own is it tough to have like have you done the same book but with different covers yeah yeah a couple of times um I actually did uh, Neil Gaiman's Neverwhere. I did uh, just for fun over one summer and I used sort of like, so it's based in the city of uh, London and look, there's a bunch of like, sort of like a treasure hunt where they go all over the city. Okay. Um, so I used like a, like a modern map of London, you know, like sort of like the, um, oh, what is it? The public transportation, which I'm uh, blanking on the tube, the tube map. Okay. Um, and so I had a customer reach out and she said, you know, like, I, I loved what you did, but like, I would prefer like an older looking map. And can I have maps on the inside on the end papers? And I was like, yes, you can. Uh, that was a great idea. And so we did this really cool, you know, version of it with like, like antique maps. And there was like a couple, there was one across the cover. And then on the inside pages, like lying down, there was two other ones. So wow. I, I was fun yeah yeah it was really cool oh so um, you can do the inside too it's not just like the outside you can do the yeah, inside too here. um so this is uh wonder woman you could see yeah and for a lot of the books what i do is like i'll do these um marbled papers so like on on regular books you'll find them they're like usually blank they might be yeah. a solid color mm -hmm. but these are all like unique oh hands. wow handmade marble papers uh sometimes i'll use like commercial you know sort of print papers that are like really pertinent like mm -hmm. like maps were like you know pertinent to the story um but um i like zhuzhing it up on the inside too so. <laughs> now you but, said handmade marble do you do you do the marbling paper? i do yeah actually and actually so i have this is uh naked book alert this is like so it's you can see it's sort of like been torn apart all the covers been ripped off this is uh naruto and this one i did oh and then i started sort of drawing oh, look at that. the fox yeah oh, and i knew so cool wait so, you drew the fox yeah yeah so i like you know like i want to add those yeah those really cool elements to it um and sometimes you do a book like a couple times because you failed the first couple times. I did uh, Serenity. I had a Serenity graphic novel uh, that the first one totally, totally fell apart and bombed. That's on oh. my Instagram. You can go see it. It's pretty, it's pretty sad. Sad Panda. 
Um, so I redid it. And then I have done Dune, I think, three times. Wow. <laughs> uh, the first time I, I was in the, in the middle of it. I was in process. And um, we had a leak, which was not great. No. And so, yeah, so the book was ruined. So it was all right. So the second time um, during gluing, I like, of course, it's the last step, right? It's always the, like the last step you're putting the book gluing it into the cover and it shifted at some point and i didn't notice and so like you look at the spine and the oh. spine like, whoop, like it's like just a little, a little, a little. <laughs> <laughs> i call it i call it's on my shelf of misfit books oh uh. and then uh i finally i i did it a third time with like the uh the sandworms going across the cover so Ooh. Uh, that, yeah, that was it's a pretty cool book. That's uh, I just reposted a pic for uh, earlier in the month for uh, Sci-Fi Day. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So it's a uh, uh, that was pretty cool. So like three tries it came out. Of <laughs> and that's what they say: third time's the charm. So right. third time's the charm sometimes. I love that you have a bookshelf of misfit books. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Well, you know, like uh. I think a lot of creators, you know, they feel this pressure that everything that they produce has to be perfect. And I, I mean, that's just not, that's just not how it's going to go. Mm -hmm. um, so I always try to, to, you know, post when like things just go horribly wrong and I'd be like, all right, so this is what happened. And this is, you know, and, um, and a lot of people have responded and they're like, I'm glad you posted that, you know, even the things when things didn't work out, you know, like, so that we can see that yeah. that's the case sometimes. Yeah. And it's so there are two cosplayers that I follow that do that as well, where they post where things go horribly wrong and they post how long things take them because yeah. it's gotten to the point where, you know, you um, are recording something in a double speed and people don't notice that it's double speed and they think it's going to be super easy. So I appreciate you for that as well, because, <laughs> you know, it people tend to forget that, you know, mistakes are going to happen, whether you want them to or not. It's just yeah. a part of the creative process. Um, now, you said the um, Black Panther book was the first one you did? One of the first ones I did when I started. Yeah. Yeah. And and how how difficult was that when you first started? Was it as easy as you or not as easy, but did it go as smoothly as you imagined it in your head? Not at all. <laughs> um because you know uh, on one hand it's really nice that uh sort of like it came out really well so but i i really struggled to make sure that everything was in the right place when you're so in this book like i said there's like three different kinds of leather you have the, the base black and then you have two additional and they're different uh textures they're different grains on purpose so that like when you're handling the book like it feels mm -hmm. you know Feel that you know um but to do that you not only have to rough up the leather underneath right to create um sort of a better grip for the glue but you have to wet the crap out of the the leather pieces that are going on top so they relax and then they um change oh. shape because it's it's skin so they literally <laughs> change shape on you and then as they dry they you know start to tighten up so you are like fighting this and trying to get in place and it's not the right shape anymore that you cut and it doesn't fit in the space that you you know and because it's like a lot of itty bitty little pieces it was just a lot of time of like okay please please dry please, please. <laughs> um and it and it worked out it like it came out great I'm really pleased with it but uh that was it was hard it was really yeah. hard <laughs> is leather your least favorite material to work with or is there oh, another I material I love it Okay. Um, and, and it's important for me, you know, because it is a, like an animal product to try and be respectful of it. You know, like, um, one of the biggest things that like I get on in my journey that I'm still learning is to, uh, just handle it, uh, more efficiently and, 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 um, like trying. So a lot of, when we get leather in, um, it comes in different thicknesses. Oh, yeah, depending on like not only the animal, but also um, the age of the animal. Um, and for a book binder, you want it like, so it can come in anywhere between like one to two milli, uh, millimeters thick, which is okay. like, like it's, 
but you, as a book binder, you're trying to get it down depending on what you're using it for to like a half a millimeter. So you are shaving it either with a knife or with like a specialized um, pairing, it's called pairing equipment. Um, and, you know, again, depending on, because this is like, it's, it's a, it's a biological product. So it's not, it's not like paper where it's like, you know, it's been processed to the point where everything is, is pretty much consistent like this, like you can't see the, you know, it's, it's, there are scars and there are different parts that are stretchy. If like, if it was cut around uh, like an armpit or so like, there are like weird things you learn about leather and skin. That's like, it does, it gets a little weird, but. Yeah, uh, no, but it's pretty cool actually. Like you don't really think <laughs> about things like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, well, you know, I think in American culture, we're not really taught to think about like sort of the animal. Um, mm -hmm. But like, so, you know, again, in this process where you're trying to like get it to the right thickness and you're trying to, so that when it goes onto the book, it not only sits properly, but it also like, it's still strong enough to hold the book together. And like, there's things, you know, you're thinking about, um, depending on, again, just that piece of the leather, it could tear or it could rip or, or like your knife, if you were overzealous and sharpening your knife, your like knife just slices right through it. <laughs> you're like, oh my God. Um, so like, you know, like, it's like, if you can master, uh, you know, leather, like, you know, that's a huge component of this and, uh, something I'm still working on. So. <laughs> yeah. Aww. And, and uh, do, well, I'm guessing there are different colors to the leather, right? Yeah. Even yeah, like real cool. leather or, or. Yeah, so um, there's there's different colors and grades and um, a lot of like the palette for the most part tends to be darker, you know, like uh, just that's tr traditional, like, you know, you're talking about darker reds and blues and, and blacks, browns, um, you can sort of get undyed um, skins and, and dye it yourself. And a lot of like sort of more modern people are, are starting to do that and getting like really into it and getting excited. Um, I like to do like sort of like a combo. So like, like a lot of my books will be a combo of like either um, paper or cloth and leather. And so it sort of gives you like not only a good contrast, like black and white or, you know, bright mm -hmm. blue and whatever, um, but also like, it just gives you like sort of a, a, a better range of palette colors, um, especially for like graphic novels, because so many of them are like, you know, bright and you, you want to bring that to the, to the cover. So um, yeah. I do like that your covers have different elements and layers to them, if you will. Yeah. Um, it's not just one flat thing, because then at that point, it's kind of like you know, redundant because the covers already <laughs> like the original covers already like a flat thing. Yeah. There's a lot of different elements to it. Yeah. How do you how do you do you play with those elements before you officially put it down on the, or do you already know what works well with each other? Um, so I usually do like some sort of test run almost every time. Like I'll take, you know, and it, like a little, like tiny, you know, just to make sure that um, whatever idea I have is 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 going to work out, which is like, you know, like the Deadpool, like, you know, I'm like, not sure this won't work. We're going to test it. We're going to see. Um, but also like to just to go back to like the, the leather again, like you want to make sure that like, depending on what you're getting, that it's, if you're doing like the tooling example, like, you know, I want to make sure that that leather, the grain of it is going to accept the tool and it's going to showcase that shape correctly, you know, because some, some don't. Um, okay. So like I, I test almost every single time and uh, again, just sort of get my ducks in order and make sure that what I'm doing is going to pan out. Um, and um, yeah, it's like, I'm always trying, just trying to cover my bases, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Do you sketch out the idea first too? Yeah, yeah. I have a, a massive sketchbook that I uh, that I made. Uh, did not bring it in with me, and um, and I usually it's funny because I started posting sort of my initial sketches like in the beginning of each project or like on Instagram so people see, and then like it's completely it always comes out completely different. I'm like so bad. I'm like oh, I'm not a very good planner. It went from this to this. It just took a left turn. I don't it know. It took. <laughs> it evolved. Is what it did. <laughs> Uh, and how long how long have you been doing this you said um so i've been like doing learning book binding for about 10 years now um and i uh outside of like that one class in college i i started uh 2000 2011 2012 
I started taking workshops again. And uh, I, I, uh, with this great book binder named uh, Don Rash, he has, he still hosts workshops. So he's in, um, he's in uh, Wilkesboro, Pennsylvania. Uh, but uh, after like three or four years with him, he was like, maybe you should just like go to school for this. <laughs> like, I was like, you going to retire me? He's like, no, just, you know. <laughs> <you're not." laughs> Um, so yeah, so I applied and I, uh, the school I ended up going to is, it's called North Bennett Street School. It's in Boston. And, uh, there's two schools that still do full-time programs for, oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Right. Shocking. Uh, there's yeah. one also in Tully Ride, Colorado. It's, I think it's like the American Spine Book Binding School. Don't quote me on, I can never remember the name, but there's like a million, you know, if people are interested, there's like a, a lot of great workshops in person and virtual, like the bookbinders sort of learned very quickly in the pandemic and uh, they will send you a, like a nice little box full of tools and like a starter That's kit. Cool. Yeah. And then you, you know, you attend the, the workshop online. Uh, marbling is like coming back. If, if you have a chance to do a marbling workshop, it is like finger painting for adults. It is so fun. It is really? Telling. Yeah, and then um, a lot of people are getting into four-edge painting. It's like a What's sort of that? so it's a I don't have an example here, but it's like you take like the edge of the book and you literally uh, there's two. You can do a secret four-edge painting or just a four-edge painting, but you uh, you paint like a scene from the book. So if you're doing Lord of the Rings, you can do you know Helm's Deep, and oh. uh, I've seen that like a couple times. Yeah, it's it's sort of blowing up. Um, there's a lot of artists doing it. Um, and a secret is you'll, you know, um, so you'll see like church books and, and really fancy books are gilded on the edges. You'll see the gold or the red sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, if you like sort of just, uh, I can't explain it. I have to show you. If you, so if you sort of do this and you sort of bend the pages just like a little bit, you'll see like the painting will be revealed. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. So, um, so I've seen a bunch of workshops sort of pop up for them. Uh, there's one in Virginia. What is she called? Something cat bindery. Cat. Sorry, I will text it to you. You can post it, you know, with your <laughs> thing. Uh, but, um, but there's some great workshops out there. And uh, if people are interested, it's the nice thing about, you know, book binding is, is sort of at the base level. Like, even if you don't have any skills or like you've never done it before, in like a couple hours, you can have a book, you know, wow. you have like this nice thing that you made and it's really satisfying. <laughs> it's just like, I made this, you know? I know, I know. Um, I talked to so many comic book creators and I, and I always tell them like, how did it feel when, when it was like in your hand and they were like, it was like the best feeling. So I can imagine like you yeah. having the concept and then it like, you know, you've finished with it and you're holding it and it's just utterly amazing yeah yeah and it's a great feeling and it's great for people you know like um, as people sort of get back into crafts more you know what I mean like it's it's nice again just to have that physical sort of evidence like look I can make something yeah and then you know and then they can use it you know as a sketchbook or a notebook or whatever um so uh I highly recommend you know there's there's a lot of great great the guild of book workers um also has a resource page so if you're looking for uh people in your area you know they they will have a list of local book binders that either do work for you or repair work um oh, that's so, cool. yeah. yeah yeah there's a lot of great a lot of great resources out there that's definitely that's exciting for people that have like um books handed down to them from generation to generation stuff yeah. like that um yeah. so that's actually good to know I'll, I'll see if I could put the link in the description <laughs> we get a lot of uh, bibles and cookbooks family cookbooks so yeah my husband has a bible from I, I think it's like his great 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 grandfather or something like that I don't know I forget because I'm scared to like even look at it like at this point I'm like horrified I'm like I don't want to look at it because it'll like paper is so thin it's yeah. so thin on those bibles it's like it you know gives you a mild heart attack You're like oh, exactly oh. like anytime he like like moves it to put something I'm like don't touch it leave that like just leave it on a shelf all by itself like I don't want anything to happen to this a box yeah we're gonna put it in a box we're gonna, put it, <laughs> we're gonna wrap it up real nice and right? put it in a box and absolutely <laughs>
Well, Elizabeth, thank you so, so much for taking the time to talk to me. Um, your your covers are amazing. I absolutely love them so, so much. I'm going to shut this down. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Sure. Go follow Elizabeth. I've got all the links to her Instagram, her um etsy store in the description below i believe she has a facebook as well so i'm gonna put that in there too and hit her up for your book finding needs because i'm telling you these are they're better than the pictures i'm telling you in person they are amazing and i'll see you guys next week bye everyone